uh, but what was I saying again? Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, you know how you ever heard the joke, uh, BJJ stands for basically just judo. And well, uh, funny, that's funny. Okay, yeah, keep, keep going. Oh, no, no. So I was just saying that, like, I like, you know, when, when I heard that before, I was like, I found it funny, but at the same time, like, ah, I don't think that's necessarily true. But then after watching a lot of your videos and you talking about the history of it all, that's now, now I realize that it, 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 it kind of is. <laughs> Sports wise, it tends to be a bit different. Let me tell you a story. Even before BJJ 1918, there was this, uh, I, w- I wouldn't say call it, I wouldn't say scandal, but it was a bit of a scandalous uh, event. It was 1918. Um, I believe it was like some high schools in Kyoto, maybe, and they were um, they were up against the Tokyo High School. It was like the Kosen. Kosen is the the upper schools where they would go like team against team, and um, you had the Kyoto students uh, who were under Tsunetani Oda, and the Kyoto students were I I forgot who, but um, Basically, they were following the old Kodokan curriculum of a lot of takedowns followed by Neiwaza. So like judo today, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, Oda would like send his students to Tokyo to spy on them. And the Tokyo students would uh, close their shades or their curtains. And so they would sneak in. They would uh, pretend they were like washing laundry and their geese and or they would work there just so they would know like what are these Tokyo students doing so we could beat them and then Oda did uh, basically you know that's how you learn history repeats itself everyone talks about 1993 well in 1918 Oda decided that hey let's just drop everything including takedowns and focus solely on the ground and then if a fight starts I'm pulling guard I'm taking the guy to the ground and I'm beating him with superior Neiwaza that's what happened and then Tokyo met with all the students and Tokyo lost. I believe not all the matches, but they lost. And it was all guard pull, just really, you know, beating them with superior Neiwaza. And then Kano wrote this article um, in the mag, uh, like a school magazine, maybe. I forgot, but it was basically calling guard pullers cowards. And, you know, in self defense, <laughs> in self defense, you're going to get kicked in the face. And I mean, I, I tend to agree with him because, like, it, that's, uh, what are you going to do in self-defense? Pull guard? No. And uh, so basically, uh, and that's something that Pedro Valente also said during our talk. Like He says in a competition, in a very controlled environment, one against one, taking the other guy to the ground, knowing that you have better ground, that's a great strategy for winning. And it happened in 93, but Oda thought of it in 1918. And um, that's essentially it. That's what I'm trying to say is that You know, if you have great takedowns and the guy just ended up being on the ground and he's better at the ground, your takedowns basically mean very little in a sports context. That's insane. So essentially, like, that just means that history is repeating repeating itself. Because now it's the same thing between judo and BJJ. Like, judo guys are, like, pulling guard is, like, uh, it's it's dishonorable. It's a shame. You like, it's... It's not manly. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I'd kick you in the face if this was a real situation. And then BJJ guys are like, well, yeah, I'd choke you out on the ground. You suck. You know, like my, my blue belt is worth a black belt in judo on the ground. You know, you, you might have heard that before. And uh, so so this is like, um, it's, it's an ongoing feud, you know. But, you know, you know, somebody said something really funny. You know, Frank Mir, the uh, UFC, uh, I used to be, used to be in the UFC as an MMA fighter. And uh, I think he was a champion at one point, but he was saying how essentially a crappy win is better than a, than a, than a, than a, than a crappy loss, something like that, something to that effect. Or I think it was a crappy win is better than a, in, than a spectacular loss. <laughs> in, a set, in, in, in a sports context. So what that means is that, you know, like when, when Kyoto was fighting uh, Tokyo, and then the Kyotos were spying, like, uh, you know, to, to see what was going on there. And then they're like, okay, guys, these guys are monsters at, you know, like Atachiwaza. We're not going to beat them there. So let's just beat them on the ground. They'll never see it coming. They won't think that we're going to pull guard and we're going to kick their ass and we're going to win. And too bad, you know? That's why there's just so many rules in judo today. It's because of these people, uh, you know, taking the gray and then exploiting it. 
you know, I talked with Neil Adams. He says, I don't want to leave any black and white. So it's basically like that. Uh, everything from leg locks to guard pulling. Uh, I believe guard pulling was ban uh, banished somewhere around the early 20s because in Kyoto, there was just so much guard pulling. Like there's even a, a later feud between Oda and Yaichibe. Each had a team and guard pulling was just everywhere. So, for example, Ashigarami was uh, banned, was banished because it was so dangerous. It, uh, it tripped the knee from the inside. So eventually they came up with the knee bar. And uh, because there was like, they banned a technique, but not the entire leg locks. But after that, people figured out, like the Kodokan figured out that you can really exploit um, like gray areas. So don't ban just a technique ban everything from leg locks. And back then, you know, ligament surgeries and ACLs, you know, it wasn't a thing. Even today, like recovering from an ACL surgery, it's, it's hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I mean, that's how that, like the whole like judo issue with the rules started because there's just so many people exploiting gray areas. 